In 1801, an Englishman by the name of Thomas Young set out to determine whether or not light travels as a wave or as a particle. He conducted an experiment that became known as the double slit experiment. So he essentially took a screen that contained a double slit. So that contained two very small openings and he shone light onto that double screen. Now he placed a second solid screen screen right in front of that double slit to help visualize where the light travels. Now he said if light in fact consists of particles then we would expect to see two bright lines appear on that screen placed in front of that double slit. So let's examine diagram A. In diagram A we have the following double slit that contains opening 1 and opening 2 and we shine light as shown by the following two wave fronts. Now when the wave fronts hit the following double slit screen if the light consists of particles then these particles would essentially continue along the following straight pathway as shown in diagram diagram A. Now when these uh, particles reach the following screen they produce as shown in diagram B the following two bright lines and only two bright lines will be formed. So if the results are produced as shown in diagram A and diagram B then light travels as a particle. However following the experiment many bright lines were observed and some were more bright than others as shown in the following diagram. So this basically showed that for this particular case light travels as a wave rather than a particle. Now how exactly are we to explain the following spectrum of bright and dark colors. Now to understand why such a pattern pattern of bright lines is observed, consider monochromatic wavefronts hitting the double slit screen. Monochromatic simply means we're dealing with one color, one wavelength. So let's suppose we have the following wavefront that consists of a single wavelength, so it's monochromatic. Now what exactly will happen when it hits the following obstacle that essentially consists of the following two openings. Now from our lecture on dispersion of light we know that dispersion of the wave will take place and two new wavefronts will be formed. So wavefront number one and wavefront number two and they will propagate outward toward the following screen. So as they travel toward the screen, crests of this wavefront will essentially overlap with the crest of this wavefront and that will essentially create constructive interference. So these blue regions represent the crests and the empty regions in between the blue regions represent the troughs. So these intersection points are essentially our points of constructive interference, while these axes represent the point of our destructive interference. So when the crests of one wave overlap with the troughs of the second wave, destructive interference takes place. So this is our location represented by X of our destructive interference. Now constructive interference leads to bright lines while destructive interference leads to dark lines. So if we essentially take a ruler and we draw a straight line through the following regions of constructive interference, that line will essentially lead to our bright line. So we can do the same exact thing with these points of intersection. And notice the regions in between these bright lines are dark lines. And we can do the same exact thing with these X's. So this is the bright lines that are described in the following diagram. And these are the dark lines that are found between these bright lines. 
So, once again, we conclude that the reason that this is observed is because of constructive and destructive interference of these wave fronts. So basically, in this particular case, the light travels as waves and not as particles.